So this soap was both a lot of fun and a monumental pain in the butt to make. Both in equal portions. Uh, but at the end, it ended up incredibly cute and absolutely amazing. But before I tell you what that soap is, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And today we are doing a really cute soapy thing. This is actually a custom order. It was a special request from a Sudzer. And we went ahead and made extras for, you know, the website and the store and all the cool things because they were so adorable. Now, this soap is a unicorn theme. And there's a lot of different things that you can do with unicorns, right? And I've seen I've seen people sort of run the gamut with it, like really big, bright, beautiful colors. It looks like a rainbow exploded and like just crazy glitter and all the craziness. And then the big black eyelash eyes and all that stuff. And there's a lot that you could do with it. We are doing a more muted um, kind of adult unicorn for this because that's what I was in the mood to do. Now this does have a piped top and so that's really cool. And it also has, of course, the horn and the things, but then we're also doing soap carving to actually get the eyes and everything in. This particular soap is scented with a pineapple, which is a delightful blend. For those of you who may remember the My Heart Pines For You from many years ago, that's what this is. It's a spicy pineapple blend and it's absolutely delightful. And well, I mean, I should stop actually talking about the unicorn soap and show you how we made it because again, equal parts, lots of fun and huge pain in the butt. Let's go. Okay, so the making of the pineapple unicorn soap. And as I said, this is both, you know, equal parts of a lot of fun and a huge pain in the butt. And the first pain in the butt with this is the scent blend really it is a spicy pineapple which is absolutely delightful we use it in uh, a Valentine's Day we used it in a Valentine's Day bar a couple years ago and that was an absolute hit it was just beloved by all so it's a great scent but it accelerates like a mother and it also um, rices it also tends to rice so both of those things problematic so here's what I did to compensate for that you see how much liquid is already in those three you know colored portions there that's because I put my super fat this particular bar is super fat at about 10% I put my super fat into the beakers instead of the actual oil blend and so the super fat that I used for this guy was argan oil and I used my quick or my uh, big bubble blend for this because I knew it was going to accelerate. I knew it was going to be a thick batter. And so I'm using that to my advantage to create, you know, my, my soap, which works because for this one, for the most part, it's, you know, primarily a white bar, but I also wanted to do a, you know, like the, the bangs of the unicorn and then also the unicorn kind of hair and then we'll pipe the top with a separate you know batch of soap you know whatever so it works that the uh big bubble blend is what we are using for this one now that is a uh, olive oil coconut oil uh palm oil and babasu as well as some shea butter and some canola oil, but it's about 70% hard oil, so really thick already. And when I say thick, I, I definitely mean thick. Like, look at that, it, and it's rising. Do you see that? 
Yep. So it's, I didn't let this set up. That just is what happened once I put the, uh, the spicy pineapple in with the kaolin clay into the main batch. Like that's how fast it accelerated. And again, it gets to the ricing and the, you know, awfulness of it all. So I, I wasn't messing around. So again, I, I knew that using the big bubble blend was going to be completely fine. We're going to have a really big, big, beautiful lather with this guy going to be moisturizing because of the super fat that we, you know, held off, but I did not scent the colored portions that I'm going to be using, you know, right now, because this is what happens when you put this particular blend into soap. It gets super thick. And you see the ricing here. I want you to pay attention to that. So this soap legitimately riced, and it's also very thick. I want you to pay attention to this in the cut later on, because it's important to know. Uh, whether a soap that you have poured that is clearly ricing while you're pouring it uh, maintains that weird ricing nature once it's, you know, fully saponified. So what I'm doing now is I'm carving out a section of the white soap so I can start kind of the bangs that will be kind of between the, the two eyes of the unicorn, right? And so I'm just going to layer, see how thin and beautiful that is? That's lovely, that's so nice. That's, no scent is in there. There is the super fat that exists within the beakers and not within the rest of the batch. And that's delightful. So that's, that's awesome how, you know, beautiful that is. And that's, that's good. I, you know, whatever. Again, we always have issues with um, different scents and so many people will just shy away from a scent that says it accelerates or discolors or whatever and you're missing out on some really really good scents if you do that because this stuff is amazing like this smell this blend is so so good so use it to your advantage in your in your soap making and learn to work around you know those constraints that the uh, whatever scent you're working with has has given you and all the rest of this is just going to go on the top for a very, very messy top. And I will skewer it. It's not really necessary, though, because we are going to pipe some soap to put on the top of this. So this isn't going to show. But, you know, it just seems unfinished if I don't do something with the top. So I'll go ahead and skewer it and make it pretty before I cover it up with some uh, whipped soap batter stuff, too. And so yeah, there, there, look we go. It's again, it's not going to show, so it doesn't really matter what I do here. And there it is, and we are ready to do the frosted top. Now I'm not going to show you the whole process of the frosted top. I just want to show you that this is the process. You just whip the bejesus out of almost any type of soap batter, and until it gets thick enough to pipe. I don't want a super stiff soap batter with this particular one though, because I do kind of want some kind of gloppy dollops, which you'll understand, you know, later. But I wanted to show you, you know, just another day in the life of me. That's, yep, but this is my life, ladies and gentlemen. It's a, a version of this every single day. And I wish I could say that I was doing it intentionally. It's just, no, that's, that's not. Nope. So anyway, the soap is uh, to the consistency that I would like. It is thick enough for me to pipe right now. And so what I am doing is I am just laying these down against the sides of the piping bag, um, in all three colors in the same bag. And I will then, you know, use the tip and do the piping things. I, I don't bake cakes or do any of this stuff, but actually I made a unicorn cake for Scout for her birthday a few years ago. And it was so hot that the frosting was super weeping. It was not stiff enough at all. And it was like 9,000 degrees in my kitchen while I was making it. And this is the result. Like that's the kind of frosting that I got instead of some really, you know, stiff peaks. And it kind of looks like a meringue. And I actually loved it and Scout loved it. So that's why I wanted to make sure that we had a, a softer batch really of the uh, frosting for the top. Again, this is just regular cold process soap that we're using for this. You can use almost any recipe for uh, piping a, a top. And I know people like to get super complicated with it and you know, you always have to do whatever. This was literally just more of the big bubble batch uh, soap that I made a small batch for so I could do the piping thing. And yeah, this will set up for, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes before 
I put the next you know piece on which will be the unicorn horns really and the unicorn horns I, I pre-made I have a mold for just a little plastic mold guy that I got from you know Joann's or Michael's or something and those are going to be put in after this sets up for a little bit which it is now done so it will hold it well and see so I'm just gonna press it in there and those will all be again they were made out of melting pork and they will all be pressed into you know the places where they're going to need to be so we can cut the, the soaps and the things and then we will actually not see pop this now the reason i'm not going to see pop this is because i have a melt and pour uh horn on top of there so if i stick this in my oven the melt and pour is going to melt and the horns are going to look really weird but since i'm working with pastels it's actually okay i usually see pop everything to make sure that all of my soaps go through gel and this is a more pastel color so gel is not really necessary i don't really need to make sure that those colors pop and survive amongst all of the the clay because this has a ton of kaolin clay in it right and so what looks like it could be a good color if you're not gelling it if you're not see popping it with all the extra clay that's in there it is not going to be nearly as bright and as pretty as you wanted but again we're working with pastels today so it's not that big of a deal and let's go check out the cut Okay, so all of that process was, you know, reasonably easy. It wasn't, it was enjoyable. I actually do like piping soap tops. I just so very rarely do it because that's not really my style. I, I my, my soaps really aren't super garish and, you know, whatever. And so that's pretty though. Isn't that lovely? It's so nice. Now again, remember what I said to look for in the white to see if you see any signs of rising within the, you know, hardened bar. Um, this is going to be a cut with the miter box for me because the tops are just, they're so tall that they don't really fit in the, um, in the soap cutter. And also, I, look how cute that is. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. That is so nice. And yeah, any signs, signs of rising? Do you see any graininess? No, you don't see any graininess. So this is the reason, I, I don't know, I showed you a rising and acceleration and separation and all kinds of crazy stuff in the uh, dumpster fire beer soap months ago. And I showed you, you know, what you're quote unquote supposed to do when it's rising, take your stick blender to it, blend it out. And I mentioned in that video, I've literally never done this before, let's see if it works. And the reason I've never done it before is because anytime that I've had a soap that is riced, I throw it in the mold and go, well, this will be a fail, and I come back the next day to cut it, and it's perfectly fine and smooth and glorious. So for me, ricing has never been an issue in the finished product whatsoever. So, you know, take it for take it for what it is. You saw it rice, and you saw the finished product, and the finished product, there's, there's no signs of ricing. So maybe don't take your stick blender to it and spare yourself, you know, another five minutes of agony, really. And... Oh, come on. That is so pretty. That's so cute. <laughs> yeah, that is such a nice bar of soap. And the scent blend on this, it, it's yes, it accelerates, yes, it rises, but it does not discolor, which is very good. That's very important in the, you know, in a unicorn soap thing that I've done here. So yay for, for that. And yeah, no, that is so so nice but yeah the scent itself it's absolutely fantastic it's a very strong scent it survives cure like nobody's business and that's I don't know it's not always true of the fruity smells there are citrus specifically always has a really tough time actually surviving cure but this spicy pineapple it's nice and fruity and it stays for a very long time which is really nice now with this uh, soap here I again you can do unicorns in a lot of different ways and so uh, last time I did a unicorn I debated or I had done a little like melt and pour eye lash looking things that we put in the the middle of the bar and then poured over it and, you know whatever and this time around I actually wanted to do some carved eyes because again we're going for more of an adult unicorn really and whenever you throw black into a design like this it the black stands out more than anything else and it sort of draws your eye and your attention away from 
the rest of the pretty that exists there really so I wanted to do some playing with uh, carving some eyes for these and I went to carve the the end piece just to see you know just try my hand at it and see how good I was at it and it I don't know, it didn't really work the way that I wanted it to. So I brought in George May to actually do the carving, which is what she is going to show us right now because she's an artist and she's good at all the things. So yeah, look at that. She's <laughs> done. Like, hey, George May, will you carve me some eyes? Oh, you mean like this? And she just whips them out. Like, she knows exactly what to do. She even centers them. So it's a unbelievable. Like, she's just so good at all of the things and yeah she's just gonna use a little skewer and uh, carve the eyes in and that is when I was doing it I was using an actual like clay tool to carve it out and it I don't know it got like too big and in weird places and so whatever it, it's all a thing but Georgia she's again she's a professional she knew that a clay carver thing sculpting tool was not going to work for this. A, the soap is really, really soft and so anytime that you're touching it, you are going to be pulling more away than you might necessarily want. But you know, two, look at that skewer. We're looking for like a little delicate eye and we want to do some cool detail with eyelashes and stuff. So a, a bamboo stick is going to be much, much better for this. And she's, she was right. She's very rarely wrong. And yeah, so these soaps are being carved. Oh, stop it. Stop it. You're so good. So these soaps are being carved, you know, next day. So this was, you know, poured last night and it's, so it's a very soft, you know, soap, but you could carve soaps any time really. And I think honestly, the uh, longer you let it set up, the better the carve will be and the less messy it will be. But, you know, we're, we're working with what we have. Otherwise, we will totally forget to put the eyes on this. And then we'll look at it and go, weren't we going to do something else with this? What was that something else? And, you know, completely forget entirely. So we do it right away. And, yeah, I really like the, uh, the little bang there that kind of goes down into the eye with that particular one. And I like how the bangs, you know, sort of worked in the, the white portion for that by carving out that tunnel essentially in the white and then pouring the really liquid uh, colored soap batter into that little, that little hole. Super cute. The whole thing worked out really well. These uh, soaps ended up super tall when it was all said and done because you have, you know, the regular patch of soaps and then you have the piped top and, you know, then the horn obviously makes it super duper tall. So these soaps will not be going into boxes. That is for darn sure. But I put like I don't know, maybe 12 of my soaps and boxes anyway. For the most part, they're all sold naked because we're eco. But yeah, that is uh, day 117, the Pineapple Unicorn Soap. And they were cute before, but Georgia May really made them cute to the nth degree by, you know, carving the little eyes in them. And yeah, super adorable. I, it's so cute. cutest thing ever, right? I I love this soap. And again, there is a lot to be said about, you know, soaps that are more muted in colors. I'm super into pastels right now. And so that was a big win for me, but also the, you know, more muted design. It ends up being more adult. It looks super cute. It's not as, there's nothing wrong with glitter and bright colors. I love that too. But I think for this bar, I really love what we did with the carving of the eyes even more. The scent is an absolute slam dunk. I love this spicy, this spicy pineapple so very much. And you will too. And uh, if you are interested in this soap, you can totally find it on the website. Again, we did make enough for um, the website and the shop. So you can find it at soapandplay.com. If you are interested in following me on social media, I'm there. Do the things. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Facebook's going to be the best place to go because that's where I post the most coupon codes. As well as, you know, here on the channel, I give a lot of, you know, soapy deals out here too. So you should definitely subscribe so you can be a part of that. And yeah, just hit the button, the word, subscribe. Yeah. And anyway, that does it for today. It is a uh, day 117 out of 365 days of soap, which is super awesome. Triple digits, go us. 
and I'm done for the day. So thank you so much for joining me for another round and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.